Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Famaze. No, this is not the worst assault rifle for the counter-terrorists in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This is a new, um... There's a little bit of a subgenre within the roguelike or procedural death labyrinth or roguelite, whatever you want to call it, community called the Lunch Break Roguelike. And this is a little bit uh, like that, a little bit like Desktop Dungeons. For example, it's a uh, simplistic, minimalistic game with some roguelike elements, but it's also a little bit more puzzly than your average roguelike-ish game now. You know, this is not The Binding of Isaac, this is not Spelunky, this is not FTL. Uh, and I don't think it really aspires to be, but it's out on Steam. Uh, it's five bucks and it's 25% off for its opening week sale, which I think puts it at... 375. One of the other noteworthy things about this game is that it actually has an original soundtrack by Disasterpiece, who you may know for the excellent soundtrack in Fez, if you played that, as well as some of his tracks in things like Sound Dodger Plus and other stuff. But in any case, we're going to get started here. Uh, I've played about an hour and a half of Fumaze so far, and of course, as the guy who plays a lot of roguelikes, one of the guys who plays a lot of roguelikes uh, on YouTube, um, I'm comparing this to some pretty heady company, right? I'm comparing this to FTL, which I've been playing a ton of, especially with the Advanced Edition out, Spelunky, The Binding of Isaac, of course, but also I have a pretty large breadth of knowledge for these casual roguelike-ish experiences. To be honest with you, I think Femaze, uh, is not necessarily one of the most engaging ones that I've played, and I'll explain why. It's very simplistic, and to some extent that's, that's cool, but it also ends up being kind of its downfall, and I don't think it has nearly as much replayability as a, a lot of the games uh, in that kind of sphere, or in this kind of sphere do. Um, which is not the end of the world, because it is only $5. That being said, uh, a lot of its competition and a lot of the games that really hook people in the genre, hook them because they are uh, very replayable. I don't know if this necessarily has that same kind of thing going for it. Anyway, here's the lore. The Mad King has turned the happy rutabagas of the land into monsters and is searching for the magic recipe for royal rutabaga pudding. You must delve into the king's domain to rescue the rutabagas, find the gem of truth, and uncover the recipe before the king eats everyone. So basically, there's two stories in the game. There's easy mode, and then there's expert mode. You have to complete the easy mode to unlock the expert mode. I haven't completed easy mode, and it's kind of damning, but basically I played like an hour and a half of an easy mode game. And it was like, well, I think it's probably like 45 minutes of an easy mode game. And then I was like, you know what? I don't necessarily care to follow this through to the end, so I don't necessarily know how many floors uh, or how many levels are even involved. And you get your choice of uh, three different units here uh, that you can take, three different classes, I guess I should say. You can have the knight, uh, the thief, and the wizard, and what their abilities are, the second thing there, I should say, is what their abilities are. So um, after you kill a certain amount of enemies as the knight, you get a charge attack, which helps you do more damage. Uh, typically kills enemies in one shot, except for super strong ones. Uh, the Thief can disarm traps, there are traps in here in a standard Dungeons of, or Dungeons and Dragons style, not Dungeons of Dreadmore style. And the Wizard can turn an item into uh, a different item, and also has a uh, fireball that they start with. We're gonna play as the Knight, because that's predominantly, predominantly what I've played as so far. One thing I do want to point out, the game runs in a unusual resolution. I believe it's 114 by 640, which is pretty unusual. I don't hold it against the game, I think it still looks pretty good in terms of like a pixel art and a sprite type thing. And I think it's... It represents its information well on screen. But what's weird is that, uh, even though it looks like it's a side-scroller, it's not really. It's top-down, but the screen you see at the bottom is just a visual representation of what's happen happening to your character. Theoretically, you could play the game without that bottom screen being there, although, you know, it'd be very hard to kind of keep track of your HP and stuff like that and what's actually on the ground. Um, so even though, you know, you might be saying like, oh, we could go to the right or left right here, we can also go up, and then when I hit up, it causes me to go to the right on the screen. It's a little bit disorienting. But you get used to it pretty quickly, so um, you, you can collect money as well. I believe that ties into some kind of score mechanic or something like that. The way you attack enemies is just by walking into them, and it's very simplistic. You do one damage, they do one damage. You do one damage, they do one damage. Whether enemies uh, attack you first or you attack them first, I believe, relates to like their speed stat as well as like how you come across them in the environment. Like, for example, if, if you uh, go up behind an enemy, I think then you get a better advantage or something like that. I'll talk about those rutabagas in a second. First, though, I'm going to open these chests and get as much money as is possible. So the it's Pac-Man is kind of like a weird influence in this game. But as you light those beacons that you saw uh, that I lit earlier, um, enemies that are illuminated by the lanterns then become rutabaga and rutabagas. Is that the guy who did Mamba number five? But um, in uh, in becoming rutabagas, they then become also HP. So I, I can use, I'm going to show my special ability here basically, I can use the space bar once I've gotten a, a full charge on my attack to just instantly kill or deal a lot of damage at least to enemies that are in my vicinity. We also have an experience meter, but yeah, the, the whole rutabaga thing, oh that was a trap, this is actually scary. Uh, the rutabaga thing is um, very important because you can use these as extra HP boosts if you end up in a, a time of need. Now if you're wondering why these like 
uh, tiles are cracking when I step on them. Basically, these are traps, and it shows me uh, if, if the uh, trap gets illuminated, it shows me how many times I can step on it again before it breaks. And we can goad enemies into falling on the traps if we want to. Or if we can, I guess I should say. So we're going to get this key here, and getting the key is kind of our overall objective on a level, but I'm going to keep playing on this level because I want to level up as well, so I can't really do anything with that uh, flare there. We'll just start killing enemies. Basically, I want to level up so that I can become a little bit stronger. It's not an RPG. I mean, it, it sort of is, but when you level up, you don't, like, put skill points into anything or attribute points into anything, etc., etc. It's very much, you know, dungeons, uh, or sorry, um, desktop dungeons is really uh, the most accurate kind of comparison for this game by far, I feel. It really feels similar to that, although it does feel like a much more... Um, there's no way to put this without it being kind of offensive. It feels like kind of a feature barren uh, version of uh, Desktop Dungeons. Desktop Dungeons also had the world building kind of stuff, or the town building stuff at the very least. Um, th this does not have that. This just has those two basic quests that are in the game. And I do think the fact that it it's a little bit feature barren is one of those things that is... Uh, uh, it, it just makes it a little bit less intriguing than those games. And I'm not trying to be rude to the game, and I think it's pretty clear that I'm trying to be diplomatic. I don't think this is a terrible game, uh, but I do think that it does kind of not compare super favorably to a lot of its competition um, in, in the same genre. So, again, you want to get the key, and then you go back to where you started, basically, and finish the level. Uh, but if possible, I would also like to level up. And, I mean, the game is called Femaze, right? It's got a lot of maze-like elements uh, going on in it as well. You tend not to get lost. The map does a pretty good job of, uh, of keeping you where you want to be. Occasionally, there are critical hits. I really don't know what the treasure's for, and I think... There we go, we leveled up. I think to some extent, I do hold that against the game as well. It's, it's minimalistic, so, you know, I can understand why there's not a tutorial, but by the same token, a tutorial might have been nice to kind of explain uh, some of the kind of different mechanics that uh, I don't necessarily understand. So I'll talk about the items that we have here as we move a little bit further along, but why don't we just finish the level first and we'll go to the sticky sewers. You might be saying, like, what is there to get? How could you be missing something with respect to this game? Well, there's this screen, and I don't really know what this screen does. It's, it's like... We can choose what we want on that, like, upper thing here. Like, the king can't see the cookbook. Rutabagas are spoiling. Hurry. Another bad batch of pudding. Um, I'm not really sure what these are. I believe this kind of influences what the rest of the game is going to be. Or, like, what the next floor is going to be. Like, maybe if we go to this one, there's going to be a lot of... Um, um, l lanterns or something like that. I or maybe I'm trying to, like, put the story in order here. But I have no idea. Another bad batch of... I don't know. Okay, let's start with this. Another bad batch of pudding. Maybe we'll try to tell a story. Uh, that's something that I would have liked to have had explained, at least. So we're in the sticky sewers, and uh, you're going to start to see that the game's a little bit repetitive. There's only a, a set number of enemy types, and only a very, very few number of, um, of item types that we're going to end up coming across here. Ghosts are the worst... Because they end up stealing whatever item you have. So that's why I used my potion there. So of the items that you can find... Um, you know, oh, that trap can really screw you. Um, press space to smite. I don't even see an enemy. There we go. Um, of the items you can find, potions uh, are extremely important to get you back to full health. I believe they take you all the way to full health. Um, there's also flares. Flares serve as basically miniature beacons. There's teleport orbs and there's fireballs, which is basically like a scroll that you cast that uh, um, does damage. Two enemies. Uh, we don't have an item. Ghosts always steal your items, so they're really infuriating to deal with. I think that's all the ones <clears throat> that I've seen so far in, you know, well, let's let's be honest, what's a relatively limited amount of play. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of the, my main sticking point with the game, is that it just doesn't seem like there's very much here. And keep in mind that I'm always the person that is like, oh, people are complaining that, like, this $5 game isn't that long? That's crazy, you know? That's like, you know, the price of a couple of cups of coffee or something like that. You can get a few hours of enjoyment. That seems like a good value proposition to me. This is one of the times, uh, and it's fairly rare, that I kind of fall on that other side. Uh, I'm very worried about my health here. That I kind of fall on that other side, and I'm like, you know, to be honest with you, for once, I, I sort of understand where people are coming from that, you know... I mean, obviously, this is, con like, completely ignoring people being in... Uh, like adverse financial situations and stuff, stuff like that, but um, I like sincerely find myself being like, well, I maybe there's not five dollars worth of content here, especially uh, for people who are used to paying. Maybe that's a fireball, by the way. We'll pick that up uh, for people who are used to buying a, a roguelike at a similar price point or a roguelikeish game at a similar price point uh, that could give you hundreds of hours of entertainment. 
beyond that, uh, I'm gonna go down to the next level here, because why not? Uh, I just sort of feel like I, I've kind of, the, the gameplay has worn pretty thin to me, even in the limited amount of time that I haven't played it so far. Nothing but respect for the, um, um, where's the pudding one? There we go. So I already used another bad batch of pudding, and then we'll go with this one. Bloop, stay with me here forever. I don't know what this does, but we can choose between them. Um, yeah, the, like the uh, minimalistic nature of the game, I think is, uh, it's fine, and I oftentimes find myself enjoying minimalist games. Uh, n no, we're okay. Uh, oftentimes find myself enjoying, in enjoying, I should say, uh, minimalistic games. However, I think there's just not really that much, that much uh, strategic depth to this one uh, in order to keep me engaged. Your mileage may vary, but basically here's what you got. You got, you got walking, items, and attacking, and your attacks always do the same amount of damage barring critical hits. You do have different classes in the game. Um, we'll smite him down. You do have different classes in the game, I'll admit that as a source of variety, but uh, apart from that, every single floor to me feels pretty similar, and uh, I don't really find myself doing stuff that I find that exciting uh, on a like floor-to-floor -floor basis. What I will say is that one of the highlights of the game is the uh, the soundtrack. I think Disaster Piece is, you know, deservedly one of the uh, more well-known composers, especially in the world of, of indie games, and, uh, you know, the, the soundtrack is good. Maybe not... Uh, Something I would necessarily pick up on Bandcamp for myself to listen to in my off time, but um, from an audiovisual standpoint, I think the game does fine. Uh, it, it's just, in, from a gameplay standpoint, I kind of don't know what it wants to be. Like, is it, is it a roguelike? Not really. Is it a puzzle game? Well, sort of. And I had this problem with desktop dungeons to some extent, too, where it wasn't necessarily my thing. Um, but I think that if, if you liked desktop dungeons, uh, this is kind of just like a very similar game that doesn't necessarily do as much so uh, I mean I always feel bad when I, I come into these videos with with some kind of abject negativity we should just use smite there but I, I really do find myself to, to use the uh, most unfortunate B word I find myself being bored uh, when I when I play too much of this uh, when, when I play more than like you know a few minutes at a time uh, I, I just find myself like mashing the keys and being like okay mindlessly playing and that might be cool for some people as, as kind of like again a lunch break type thing uh, but for me personally uh, I, I think this kind of pales in comparison as someone who came into this game looking for you know roguelike -ish type adventure um, it, it just doesn't do enough for me so that's me being uh, you know fairly negative in this game your mileage may vary though you can check it out on Steam to be honest with you a lot of the Steam uh, reviews or at least a couple of the Steam reviews sort of agree with me um, people saying like yeah it's just like it's repetitive it's got some positives it's not you know the worst game in the entire world uh, again audio visually I think it works totally fine um, and I, I kind of do dig this like arcade style display even though the resolution is super weird I kind of like it but I'm just I'm confused and bored and it just kind of doesn't hook me as much as other roguelikes do but I guess it's more of a oh you know what this is totally the wrong order it should probably be like Awake pupils of Idor, and then the eyes awake, and then, I don't know. I really just don't know. And the other thing is I just don't know where it ends. Uh, again, I've, I've gotten past this level. Maybe I should have taken Awaken, uh, maybe the, maybe the frames correspond to the actual levels. Because this one definitely seems like you could say, like, Awaken, uh, eyes on this one, of course. Uh, that was stupid of me to possibly walk over that trap again. I guess traps don't go off twice. Uh, they wake up when a beacon shines in their face, basically. Um, we'll keep playing for a little bit here, but really this is what you see is what you get. Uh, to some extent, and it's just, I don't know, it doesn't offer quite enough for me. It is cheap, I'll give it that, uh, but apart from that, can we actually, there must be something to do here. I mean, there are still like those secrets that you, you find in other games uh, of this type, but uh, I haven't really been able to, to suss out the greater mysteries yet. More like the Archie's Weird Mysteries, if you ask me. Uh, there's our key though, so we'll just pop one of these bad boys. And again, I don't know if, it, and this is something that, you know, is that feeling of not knowing what to do is kind of normal in a, in a roguelike or a procedural death labyrinth game. I just don't know if, um, Let's go with the rutabagas are spoiling, I don't know. Um, uh, I just don't know if that's a feeling because like eventually I'm gonna unravel those mysteries or if it's just like not properly tutorialized or if maybe I'm just missing something like um, maybe uh, maybe I should be feeling this way or maybe I should be trying to like fez out with a like a spreadsheet and a word document like those greater mysteries of those those story frames in between levels. That's the most intriguing part. Uh, we might as well, we, we can teleport. 
So we'll teleport away from this ghost because otherwise it's just gonna uh, take my item. So I might as well use the item to accomplish something. Similarly, um, I'm gonna pick up the potion. Then I'm just gonna use it because if I don't use it, the ghost will chase me down. And actually a critical hit, I think, causes you to hit the enemy before they hit you. It doesn't just do more damage. So I actually wouldn't have lost my potion there. Again, we might as well teleport, um, teleport up here. Just get away from the ghost, because we might as well use the item whenever we have the opportunity to do so. Ah, oh, you motherfucker. The ghost mechanic is kind of fun, because it's frustrating, but, um, I don't know if it's enough. And also, I mean, there is the kind of thing where, like, one of the things that's nice about a roguelike, and maybe the, my main problem with this game, I let him steal the key like an idiot. Um... Might as well teleport. Uh, maybe my main problem with this game is that I'm, like, miscategorizing it. Maybe I should be categorizing it as a puzzle game, which would have a different set of criteria. Um, uh, I guess it's not really roguelike -ish, but anyway. Um, there's just there's just no kind of variability. I mean, I think the, the mazes are different every time, but uh, it's, it's not really that uh, replayable. And I think I've, I've mentioned that a few times now, but it is... Um, something that has been kind of cumbersome so far. Anyway, um, maybe we'll finish this level and then we'll call it quits because I really just don't know more, uh, or what more I have to say here. We might not even be able to finish this level because I gave away my key like a big idiot, but, uh, I'm, I'm certainly hoping that that's going to be possible. I find myself playing quite mindlessly, and I'm sorry that I didn't have, uh, maybe more cogent commentary to bring to this, but, uh, I was honest at the very least. Now, please tell me there is a key... Uh, that could be a key. Blue things on them. I, I don't even look at the bottom of the screen anymore, except to see how strong the enemies that I'm facing are. Uh, it's not a key. That is a beacon. That's okay. There might be a key down here somewhere. We did level up. Ah, uh, there's our key. Okay. So let's try not to get this stolen by a ghost. We're just gonna try to make it to that exit, and then, um, we can justifiably leave this floor. I do like the song that plays after you get a key. I will- I'll give it that. Now, where? I don't want to run into ghosts, which is why I'm, I'm wary about coming up here. I'm just trying to find the keyhole. Or a, a beacon illuminates so much more of the map that it would be uh, nice for us to get that, too. Come on. Oh, that's a wizard. We'll smite thee. That's a snake. I got lucky. Oh, there's the keyhole. And we will be able to get to the exit here. All right, so this will take us to the Batty Belfry. I don't know what we take for the Batty Belfry. I, I really have no idea. But in any case, that's a maze. You can pick it up on Steam if you're interested. Not my favorite game of the year so far, which I think is pretty clear. But, um, you know, what you see is what you get. And if you liked what you saw, you can check it out. It's cheap. It's cute. Good soundtrack. Uh, but apart from that, I think it leaves, uh, it leaves me wanting for a little bit more of a, you know, meaty experience. But in any case, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And, of course, uh, if you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.